now that the state has extra income from its oil status, there are fares built from the experience of other regions which seem too dependent on oil proceeds. We need to make it very clear that Lagos economy strives because of the private uh, investors, because of the, uh, the, the partnership we have the, with, with the private sector. Lagos economy strives without the oil. For some time now, even uh, statutory allocation is less than 30% of the, of the revenue of Lagos State. So having a 13% derivation being implemented for what rightly belongs to us is just an addition. Um, Lagos is not going to depend on oil resources. Uh, whether the 13% derivative comes or not, of course we know that it will come because it's a right and Lagos will, will get it. But again, that is just an additional you know, um, um, revenue for Lagos State that, are, that has already perfected um, reliance on other sources of revenue outside of oil and outside of the oil-related, you know, money that we get from the federal government. If you can do, you know, we're, and, and the old point is to move from 71% that we are now to, by next year, to about 80%, and then by 2019 to, about, to, to be totally, totally off you know, uh, depending on federal government. That doesn't mean that whatever is due to us, we won't, <laughs> we won't collect. It's a question of, um, let us dream big for Lagosians. If oil adds to the equation, it's very much welcomed. Uh, but then Lagos will not run uh, on the template of a single resource. Uh, we won't fall into the same, into the mistake that unfortunately as a country, uh, and as a region in the Niger Delta, we fell into. We do not want uh, Lagosians or those who, uh, you two are from the area where, where oil is discovered, to get carried away by cheap money. Environmental degradation is one of the effects of oil exploration, and it's been known to disrupt other economic activities in the Niger Delta region and cause health risks. You can't jeopardize the um, health or welfare of more than 21 million people just because we want additional revenue. Uh, and therefore, that is uh, non-negotiable as far as you know, uh, EIA is concerned. Uh, but then, you know, this is not like government going into the business of oil. Uh, this is about government of Lagos State uh, acknowledging that um, uh, a dutiful private sector organization, you know, has been at it for several years and now that they have struck gold as far as oil discovery is concerned, uh, Lagos is happy because once it is within, you know, uh, our, our, our space, you know, there's something that we should, uh, that should accrue. The, the oil feed is even richer in gas than in, in, in oil. Mm -hmm. So currently we are even interested we can even tap into that towards ensuring that we power Lagos more and that's that's achievable so it's been estimated that we have about over 600 billion cubic feet of, of, of gas in, in, in those fields and what we are doing now is to ensure that we can tap into it and use it to power the industries the homes in Lagos and ensure that we have adequate power supply so to us those are the benefits we are looking at not just the the mere that Lagos is now an oil producing state is the economic potential that that will bring to us. But let's see it be very clear that it is not that Lagos is going to depend on it. Lagos strive with the industries we have. Lagos strive because of its strategic uh, uh, what's it called location. Lagos strive because. The story of Lagos is hardly concluded without mentioning congestion on the roads. Well, this formed one of the first words of the present administration. Consequently, Lagosians have noticed reconstruction and redirection of traffic in areas like Penn Cinema in Agege local government area. So we have a generous walkway at that junction, same at Agumbiade, and have a barrier, something similar to what we did along uh, Ikorodu Road, so that people will be discouraged from taking buses on the carriageway. Then the bridge itself will have a free flow from that junction all the way across the railway line to Agumbiade, 
the bridge will now complement what we are doing at Abulegba. So you now have a free flow from Abulegba, people coming from Meron, going to Okwaba. You know, they don't have any problem anymore. Because by the time they get to Okwaba, the bridge is there to take them to Obogunji. For the island, expansion of major areas of gridlock means that some of the roundabouts must go. When the, the road was reconstructed some years back, uh, the average uh, vehicle running on the road is just like 30,000 per day, but that has increased to around 50,000. So this has you know, put more pressure on the runabout. So the runabout can no longer accommodate the number of vehicles. This is to complement the ongoing construction of a flyover in Naja. Uh, by the grace of God, we will be able to deliver within six months. The three roundabouts um, after the uh, uh, Lekki toll gate leading to Aja because uh, we've done our research. Uh, don't forget that we had a traffic summit um, um, at the beginning of the year uh, and many of the things that you now see happening, the, the laybys, the sleep roads, you know, ETC, are as a result of uh, the brainstorming that we had during the traffic summit. And part of what cropped up at that time was that if you have a signalized um, you know, intersection rather than roundabout that takes uh, roundabouts that take a good chunk of the road, thereby slowing traffic at every point in time when people are about to negotiate uh, the roundabout. That it is better to have a signalized uh, uh, kind of intersection, and 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 the research is rich in the offerings you know uh, uh, that it promises, and and we believe that that's uh, the best in the current circumstance you know, along that corridor. So we made proper consultation, uh, we engaged with the stakeholders, and we, you know, communicated the need, you know, to have it done. Beyond the roads, the government has been asked to expand its work to the rails. This follows the ongoing light rail project planned to consist seven lines, with two of them, blue and red, being the initial focus and in construction since 2010. The Blue Line, which is a 27.5-kilometer stretch from Okokomaiko to Marina with 13 stations, is scheduled to be completed in December 2016. However, the existing rail lines run by the Nigerian Railway Corporation has proposed a collaboration for integrated transport system in the state. From Apopa, which is one of our terminals, and then Ido, which is the other terminals, the two lines meet at where we are now, which we call the Butemeta Junction. And then from here, we'll go through Yaba, uh, Mushin, Oshodi, Ikeja, Agege, Ijoko, Agbado, and the rest. Uh, but when you talk of intermodal transport system, of course, they're talking of how the railways, the road, and the airport, and all whatnot can come together and make it easier for people. And presently, like our terminals at Ido, we have, I mean, it's a facility that we can stay accommodate even buses. If, for example, Lagos State wants to run from Ido, maybe if to the island where we don't have an existing track now, why not? It's possible. Where we are now, Ibutemeta Junction, outside there, we can have like a park that can link up with road. If you come from maybe Joko, Agbado, anywhere, you drop here, you just join the buses. So it's possible. <laughs> I guess a stronger Lagos is a stronger Nigeria, but it's also important that other states of the Federation grow stronger too. Well, that's it on this episode of the program. I'm Ini Thompson. <laughs>